it's time to dig through your strings because it's scrap quilt time. We're gonna take all of our red strings or whatever color you'd like and sew them together with some low volume to make a striking Bargello scrap quilt. So we're jumping back in time a little bit. and I'm just getting started on this quilt. So I have my pile of red strings, my pile of pink strings, and my giant bag of low volume strings. So I have an idea of what I want this quilt to end up looking like, but I'm not exactly sure how I want to get to that end product quite yet. I have um, a general idea of how I'm going to go about organizing these scraps. Maybe we should just jump in with these. So I'm going to take these scraps over to my cutting table and do a little bit of organizing by value, and we'll see what we come up with. So I have my red strings and my pink strings, now I'm not gonna overthink this too much, but I want to establish maybe five piles going from darkest value to lightest value. Now a great tip for doing this is to use the black and white function on your camera, even just a, you know, your cell phone, just kind of snap a picture and it'll give you an idea of the comparative value of your fabrics. So I've been working on this block construction and I'm ready to share with you kind of the final process. Now, like most scrappy projects, there isn't really a set pattern for this. It's really more of a method and it's gonna depend on your scraps and how long your strings are, how wide they are, and how many you have of them. I have mostly dark value red strings and you might have mostly light value red strings. So you could adjust this pattern to um, work better with your strings, but I'm gonna work with mine and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So in front of me, I have all of my dark value red strings and we're gonna start in the center of this block and work out. We're gonna do one side and then we're gonna flip it around and work out the other way. And the first thing you need to do is kind of take a look at your strings and see kind of how long they are. Now I have ones that vary from about, you know, 10 inches all the way up to width the fabric. I even have some that are like 108 inches long because they are kind of the leftovers of my wide backing. So I have quite a range and you just need to pick a size that will work with most of your strings. So I've been working at about 10 or 11 inches. It's kind of a nice comfortable size and uh, and it's kind of easy to manage. So here are my dark value scraps, my dark value strings, and you're just going to need them. I have separated them into a couple piles just so I can kind of easily draw a random one. And on top of that, you're going to need a nice pair of scissors. Um, we're just going to be cutting these uh, with scissors rather than a rotary cutter because we're just kind of roughly estimating the length here. We will be trimming them down more exactly at a later step. So just use your scissors, make it easy on yourself. First, we need to pick a length of string to work with. And my strings vary, so I'm just gonna pick a length and I'm just gonna use the ruler on my sewing machine here as a rough guide. And I'm just gonna start with about 12 inches. And like I said, this will be trimmed down at a later step. So don't worry too much about this. It doesn't have to be perfect or exact. It's just kind of getting it to the height of the row that will be in your quilt. So now that I have that, it's just a matter of picking another dark value string and getting it to about the same length and sewing them together, right sides together. So here's our first few pieces, our first two pieces together. And we're just gonna continue this and now this is where you need to kind of assess your scraps and make decisions about how wide you want this gradient to be and where you want the most amount of color to be, the most amount of value. So in my red strings, I have mostly this dark value red. So I'm going to use mostly dark red scraps in my quilt. So this center section that is the dark value will be the widest section of my row. So I'm gonna sew together maybe 
maybe about 20 or so inches of red strings. So I have my deepest value red string sewn together and it's about, I don't know, maybe 18 inches long. And you can see I didn't focus too much on which string I was choosing. They're not arranged in any special way. I just kind of grabbed one, sewed it together. And you can see, I also, I haven't been pressing as I go because none of these seams are gonna intersect. We're just kind of adding two in parallel lines. And so I'm just gonna save myself a step and press everything at the end. So now that I have the center of the row done, it's time to start moving outward. And so I packed up my dark red strings and now I have my medium value red strings in front of me. Now I have fewer medium value red strings than I did dark strings. So instead of kind of duplicating the width on either side of this dark string, I'm just gonna add a few to each side. So I have, let's see, like 10 of these strings sewn together. Maybe I'll just do four or so medium value on either side of this block. So let's sew some together and see how it looks. So here's my dark middle section of the row and my medium value strings. So I am going to just grab a medium value string and continue the process that we started before. So I'm gonna add maybe three or four strips to this side, and then I'm gonna flip this block around and add three or four to this side so that we get that kind of center out gradient happening. So again, I'm not gonna overthink this. I'm just gonna grab a strip, hold it up, trim it to roughly the right size. Now I'm just gonna sew this right sides together and I'll bring you back when I have kind of some medium value on each side of this block. So the medium value strings have been added to either side and now it's time to add the lightest value red strings, uh, repeating the process, adding just a couple to either side of this long developing block. Now I have the fewest light value strings. This is kind of all I have to work with. So I'm just gonna add just like one or two to either side of this block, just to kind of give it like a little bit of feathering out to the edges where we'll be adding the low volume strings in the next step. So I've done a lot of work and I've pieced six row units of red. And I'm gonna show them to you in a second, but first I wanna show you what's left of my red strings. So you guys know I started with a big bag, a big Ziploc bag, and this is all that's left. These are all of my red strings and I think that's really cut down on my kind of red string collection. So Maybe I will use these in like a rainbow quilt or combine them with another color, but I have certainly made a huge dent in this collection. I wasn't able to use every little bit of every string. And so I do have this little pile of kind of red tiny bits, little crumbs that will go into my red crumb bag. And uh, maybe we'll make a red crumb quilt sometime soon. But uh, yeah, that's not too much. I don't think that's that many leftovers considering what I started with. So now on to the quilt rows. So these are the rows that I pieced. You can see they go from the light red vo uh, value through to the medium, to the dark, medium, and then back to the lightest red value on the other end. And I have six of these. They are all different. They are all different lengths and they are also different widths. And that's fine because this is a scrappy quilt and we're gonna trim them down to make them all fit together. Now I just wanna take a minute to talk about how many rows you will need to make. I have a general guideline of how big I want this quilt to be. I'm thinking somewhere around 60 by 60. That's kind of my favorite size quilt to make. It's kind of a nice cuddly couch quilt. So I have made six of these rows because my rows are about 10 inches a piece. Some of them are a little shorter. Some of them will be a little bit bigger, but that's kind of what I'm roughly working with. So I know that I need about six rows to get to that 60 inch size. But if your strings were all shorter, if you are working with rows that are gonna end up being maybe four or five inches tall, then you'll need to decide how many rows to make for your quilt. And that's just gonna depend on how big your strings were when you started all of this. So now that I have these rows made, I have six of them here. Now it is time to lay them out on the floor and decide where you want these placed 
in the quilt. Now you saw at the beginning of this video that I have staggered these blocks so that there's more kind of low volume on one side of this center than there is on the other. And that means I'm creating a little bit of like a Bargello effect. So where the center of the darkest value red is gonna shift along the quilt a little bit. It's gonna kind of move along that center line. So that means it might just be easiest for you to make all these center blocks and lay them out on the floor or a design wall if you're lucky enough to have a design wall. And then add your low volume strips to the edges until you get that edge to where the edge of the quilt is gonna be. So I'm gonna take this first row and I'm just gonna add some low volume to it and then lay it on the floor with the rest of my string blocks, my string rows, and decide where I want these center blocks to land. There's no right or wrong answer. It's a scrap quilt, have some fun with it. If you would prefer they all line up in the middle, then you could add roughly the same number of low volume strings on either side of your rows and just make them all 60 inches or however wide you want your quilt to be. This is where the technique rather than pattern really comes in because I can't give you a precise formula for this, but all I can say is if you lay these out on a design wall or on your floor or on a spare bed, wherever you have room, then um, you can just kind of pick up a row, add to it, put it back and assess and decide if you're happy with it. So I'm gonna get to adding all of these low volume strings to the sides of these red rows and we will come back when it is time to trim all of these into straight rows. So it is the next day and I have been sewing, sewing, sewing little strips together and I have all of my rows complete and it is time to trim them to kind of a straight sided row. Because remember, as we were sewing, we were just kind of rough cutting them and so the edges are kind of offset from each other. They're not like a nice straight row that's ready to sew together. So I'm going to grab one and take it over to my cutting table and show you an easy way to trim it all down so it has a nice straight side. Okay, we have our first row here ready to trim. And you can see how kind of uh, jagged the edges are here. What we wanna do is establish a nice straight line to allow us to sew our rows together really easily and quickly. You can see I have my largest ruler here, but it's uh, what, 24 inches long, 24 and a half inches. So I would have to like cut and move my ruler and that's probably not gonna give me the straightest line for my row. So what I wanna do is I wanna get this row within the bounds of my ruler. So I'm just gonna fold it and I'm going to use the seams, it doesn't matter which one, just kind of eyeball it so that you're folding over about a ruler width. And then I'm going to fold up the other side and do the same thing. So you just want to take a little bit of time and, you know, flatten it out, make sure that it's kind of evenly folded and it's not going to be perfect. Remember we, we pieced these strings together kind of improv style. So all the seam allowances are not parallel, like these two definitely are not parallel, but it's okay. We are going to trim as carefully as we can, and when we open it up, it should be straight enough that we can get a nice seam between our rows. Now I am going to just kind of fold back these rows and find the shortest string. And it looks like it's this red one. So I want to place that so it's just covering one of the lines on my mat right there. And then I'm just gonna, as I fold these back, make sure they all cover that line. And I'm gonna straighten it as much as I can. And then I'm gonna use that line right here that extends off the side to make my cut. So I'm just aligning my ruler and my fold it could have been a little bit more compact so I could extend my ruler off both sides, but I'm just gonna place it as carefully as I can and make a nice clean cut through these layers. And take your time. You are cutting through quite a few layers here, especially with the seam allowances, you know, pressed over to the side. But just take your time, use a nice sharp blade. And now that we have this nice straight line, we are just gonna rotate it around 
and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just gonna peel back, find the shortest row, which it looks like it's gonna be that same one. There you go. Now when we open this up, we'll have a nice straight row to seam together. So here's our quilt top. It is all done. I cleaned up the rows and then just sewed them together left to right and uh, came up with this quilt top. It is about the size I expected it to be, right around 60 by 62. And I'm super happy with it. I think it's bright and fun and it has that kind of scrappy bar jello look that I was going for. Now I do wanna say if you do not have a lot of the same color of strings, then you could easily do this with two or three colors. You you could start in the middle with a purple and fade to red and pink and then out to the low volumes on the side or you could do a whole rainbow start with a red in the middle and work out with orange on either side then yellow all the way out and that would be a super fun look actually I think my son would totally love that so this is just a starting point this is a great pattern to really improvise with and kind of work on your improv string piecing techniques because it goes together pretty easily and when you create these long rows then you don't have to worry so much about fitting blocks together and making them all the same size and uniform and matching seams. So now that it's all done I need to decide on a quilt design for it. I think that I might concentrate some more dense quilting in this kind of dark band and then and maybe do something a little looser on the outside. I'm not entirely sure yet and I often don't make the decision on the quilting design until my quilt is actually loaded on the long arm. That's not always the most efficient way to quilt but it is what it is. So I hope you guys enjoy and have a fantastic day and happy quilting!